What's up guys, Seth Fighter here. Just got done fishing the Bassmaster Elite up here on Mille Lacs AOI tournament. Got the W and uh, I'm gonna break down everything I did to win this tournament from my mapping, my graphs, my drop shot rig, everything for you. So uh, I'm gonna show you how it's done. Check her out. This is what I was looking for. I was fishing main lake reefs, looking for large boulders. And you see we got the side scan fired up on the hummingbird. We got a big reef here. It shows on the Navionics map. We got a little hump here. And out on the end of this, there's a bunch of huge boulders. So what I would do, I did this a lot during the tournament. I didn't really practice much. I would just side scan during the tournament. Okay, we come across a point, a bunch of nice boulders on it. I'm gonna go here with my cursor and put waypoints on each individual boulder. That way I could get right back on top of them. These were the best ones, the ones that stuck out a little bit. And you see that big shadow on it, you can tell that's probably at least a three foot tall rock. So I'd move my cursor right onto it, put a waypoint on it, and those will transfer to my front graph now when I go up front and go right to them and drop a drop shot right to them. And that was definitely what I was keying on, these really large boulders, especially those ones that, a lot of the places are big boulders mixed in all this stuff, but those ones that kind of sat out by themselves, those were really key for me this week. When you go right over the hard yellow, that's when you're right on top of it. And the, the fish are sitting off to the sides of it. So when I'd see that red, that's usually what I was dropping to it. These fish are so tight to the bottom, you can't really see them. But I know I'm like right on the edge of a boulder right there. So that's where I would make my drop. If you dropped right on top of the yellow, um, you wouldn't get bit right there. They're kind of hanging right on the sides of them. But a lot of these fish I couldn't see on the graph. I'm essentially just dropping to the bigger rocks that I would see down there on the bottom. and. Uh, a lot of the fish took a long time to bite. I'd sit there and drop on a rock and, you know, fish it for a few minutes at a time. These fish here are just so fat and lazy. They're, there's so many crawfish down there, they're not running around looking for um, chasing food down. So you really almost had to just annoy them into biting. But occasionally I would see one on the graph and drop to it, but nine times out of ten I'm just dropping to, like, the bigger rocks I would see on the bottom and trying to get on the sides of them. When the sun's out, I try to do the shady side. When the wind would blow, I'd try to drop on the windy side. But some of these rocks are really big. You just kind of have to drop all around them. And uh, patience was a big thing. Like I said, I just kind of had to have the confidence that there was a fish there, even though I couldn't really see them. They're tucked so tight into the rocks. But OK, see right there how the graph went to yellow? I mean, the bottom's here, but that's the top of the rock right there. That red's kind of when I'm hitting the cone, the side of it, and we're going over it again. Right where I would see that red is basically when I would drop my bait. Right there, I'd drop on the side of it. That's another big rock coming up right there, but wherever I'd see that red on my hummingbird, that's where I'd try to drop my bait. See, another key thing was it seemed like the longer it took to get a bite, usually the bigger the fish was. Any of the fish that I saw and dropped to and they bit immediately were, uh, they were, they were smaller fish, um, two pounders, you know, fish you didn't really want to weigh in. So uh, if I saw one down there and it took a long time to bite it, I got a lot of confidence in it at that point just because I knew it was a big fish. There was one, I caught a six pounder yesterday that it took me five minutes to catch. I, uh, I, I seen the fish on the graph drop to them, was shaking it there for like three minutes, nothing bit. I actually went back over the top of my bait with my graph and I could see him still sitting there. So. I backed off again and probably about a minute later it bit and it, it was a six pounder so uh, definitely a key fish for me yesterday. I wasn't getting a ton of bites but uh, definitely had good quality when I was catching. Another thing I was doing I was running a super long fluorocarbon leader. My drop shot only had a 12 inch drop to it but I had a, at least like 15 feet of fluorocarbon going um, off of my braid. And the key to that is just uh, when you're dropping vertical on these fish, the floral carbon flies off your spool a lot better than the braid does. The braid kind of sticks a little bit to itself, so I was able to be more accurate with a longer liter of floral carbon. Because like I said, these fish are super lazy. They wouldn't swim two, three feet to eat your bait. You literally had to put it on their nose. So uh, that was another thing I was doing was using a half ounce VMC cylinder drop shot weight. 
Uh, the weight allowed me to get my bait down faster, more vertical on them, and also allowed me to hold it in the same spot for longer without, you know, the wind moving my bait around or um, just lifting on it a bunch. I can keep it right in the same place without pulling it away from the fish. Another thing I'd do when I dropped and I was pretty confident there was a fish there, I'd, I'd pull the boat off them a little bit, open up the bale, let out some line. Another thing, the half ounce sinker just helped me keep my bait right there. I could free spool some more line off and get the boat a little bit further away from them. They were kind of spooky. They didn't really want the boat sitting right on top of them when they bit. So I'd go over them with the graft, drop to them, and then uh, back the boat off. Not far, just 10 feet or so, you know, and get it where it's not directly over them. I think it helped get a lot more bites. And the reel was super critical. Uh, I was using Exist 3012. It's got like the smoothest drag known to man. I use 3,000 size spinning reels. Uh, the larger arbor on them allows the line to come off a lot better rather than the you know, 2,000, 2,500 size. They, also, they manage line way better and have a better drag in them too just because they got more surface area. That was really important. I'm using six pound fluorocarbon leader and catching you know, five and six pound smallies and they pull like crazy. Um, a lot of zebra mussels down there when you're rubbing up against these rocks. Six pound test turns into four really quick, so you really had to be easy with them. But there's nothing really for them to get snagged in out here. There's no brush piles or weeds or anything. So um, as soon as I'd set the hook, I'd back my drag off and just let those fish go and kind of wear them down until they weren't <clears throat> pulling as hard and I'd get my hands on them. But that super smooth drag was critical. They made really hard runs at the boat. And, between the hook pulling out and breaking the line, it, it was uh, it was crucial to have that buttery smooth drag. If it, if it missed a beat, you'd break your line pretty easy. There's one. It's a big one too. He must not be that big. He bit pretty quick. Oh yeah, giant dude. Yeah, that's where that drag got crucial. I'd actually have it set a little bit tighter when I'd lift into him just to get a good hook. And then once the fight was on, I'd back it off and just let that fish do his thing. You can see how hard those things pull. I mean, they, and they're diggers on this lake. They don't really jump. It's just bulldogging the whole time. So having that, you can see how smooth that drag is. It ain't missing a beat. I should have came here yesterday. It's a giant, dude. Yeah, uh, another key for me this week is using a AGS Daiwa rod, seven foot medium light. Uh, I like the length when I'm fishing vertical, uh, keeps it close to the boat, but uh, the AGS guides are really important, they're super sensitive, and where I was fishing during the tournament, the waves were giant, it was really hard to feel anything, I mean big wind, big waves, and uh, those AGS guides allow me to detect the bite really good. They, it's not a hard bite at all, it's just kind of a little extra pressure on your line, it doesn't feel much more than, much different than when your sinker's hugging a rock a little bit. but. Um, it's pretty crucial to me uh, detecting the bites in that heavy wind. It's a giant, dude. Just tucker him out. Grab a big fatty. That's a tank, dude. How fat that thing is. And that was another big key. Is this? You can see this. Uh, this is a kind of a new style finesse hook. Most of your traditional uh, drop shot hooks, it's a number two VMC Nico. It's almost kind of like a Shaughnessy style hook. It's got a little bit of a three degree offset. I don't know if you can see that, but um, most finesse hooks we use, uh, you know, they're real small, real short shank, and they have a tendency to want to skin hook a lot. Like, um, and the problem is when those fish uh, get skin hooked, they pull real hard and that little piece of skin will get ripped out. But with that, uh, with that longer shank on the hook, it, it penetrates harder. It gets more straight into their heads rather than skin hooking them on the top of the mouth. So it allowed me to keep giant fish like this buttoned all week. And 
That is a tanker right there. Look how fat that thing is. That's my lax for you right there, dude. Giant smallmouth. Drop him back in the drink. <laughs> 